So I think it's important for us as a podcast to acknowledge when we're wrong about something. Even if we think we might still be right in the end, we still want to give credit where credit is due. We bagged on the first G.I. Joe Origins slash Snake Eyes movie, um, and I still think rightly so. I thought that was a bad trailer, and it was only 45 seconds. This trailer that just dropped a few days ago, this should have been your first trailer, guys. This G.I. Joe Origins slash Snake Eyes, whatever we want to call this, this was a much, much better trailer in terms of what's the story? Why should we care about this character? The only issue I had, uh, there's two random issues. The cool shot at the end where he's wearing the helmet and he drives off, I had the sneaking suspicion that that's the final shot of the movie, and he's <laughs> barely suited up. The other issue I had was, I think this trailer does a really good job of showing his training and his, his story of like where he comes from, and he meets this friend that he more or less saves the life of. The trailer does not do a good job of showing that's actually Storm Shadow. I saw that in a featurette that also got posted later that same day. I'm going, maybe you should have explained that better because, okay, if this movie is about Snake Eyes versus Storm Shadow and the once brotherhood, now rivalry, mm-hmm. you should have opened with that. That's a great idea. If that's what this movie is about, then I've done a complete 180 and I'm interested in this movie. I still... Ever since they announced this, I still am very much against the fact of how much of Henry Golding's face they're showing. But I, at the same time, understand because it's Henry Golding and he's such a hot commodity right now. You got to show, hey, ladies, we've got this handsome guy. Look at his face. It's the Stephen Amell in Ninja Turtles case all over again. You've got this notoriously masked character, masked and silent character, but you got to show his face. I also was not expecting nearly as many G.I. Joe tie-ins as there are in this trailer of, here's Cobra, I'm going, oh, so is he going to, is he already with the Joes by the time he's in this movie? Because I always assumed, like, he was with the Joes, and then he discovers about Cobra and everything else. Like, I still have issues with this trailer, and I still have a lot of question marks about this movie, but I thought this trailer was so significantly better than the first one that I thought it was only just to give credit where credit is due. Josh is still on the fence, however, I can tell by his facial expressions. Yeah, I... It was better. It's definitely a better trailer. I'm with you on that that final shot. Wow, really cool. And, like, the visor goes down, and it was like, all right, here we go. And then he kind of takes off slowly on the bike, and I was like, oh, that's the last shot of the the movie. I guarantee that that's the last shot of the movie. Um, So I – my other issue – until I, I, mean, I guess I'm also kind of floating some ideas, story ideas around in my head about how they could work here because maybe they're trying to retell some things here. But I, when I first saw it, I had a huge problem with Cobra being involved because it, it's I wanted a Snake Eyes story, and you're giving me a GI Joe story starring Snake Eyes, and that, I don't need that. We already got that. However, this comes with your comment of I thought of what of you thinking that him uh, Snake Eyes being with the Joes is when he figured out who Cobra was or whatever you know you know what I mean. Um, what if if we're in the mood of rewriting some stuff, he uh, Cobra is the reason that Snake Eyes' master is dead, dies, whatever. And so he joins the Joes to go after Cobra, and then finds out that Storm Shadow is with that is with Cobra, and so then you have a that rivalry means more. Okay. Uh, to me, at least, okay. and, and yeah, like yeah. just pull it. But that's me pulling it out of my out of my butt. And honestly, I don't think that this movie has the balls to do anything like good storytelling. So uh, <laughs> it's not like we have two previous movies to tell us otherwise. Yay! I, I think it's me. This is a lot like Transformers, except we've yep. been burned a lot less than Transformers. There's just two bad movies here as opposed to, what, five bad Transformers movies? But who knows? Transformers had Bumblebee, which we will still continue to sing that movie's praises. So maybe this is the Bumblebee to the G.I. Joe franchise that it so desperately needs. Maybe. Because 
I know studio ex- executives want this to do well so they can restart their G.I. Joe franchise. And I think long term, maybe it's just me, I still think they want that G.I. Joe Transformers crossover at some point. Oh, because I, I studios want that money. Because if you've got studios contemplating, and I can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth. If you've got studios contemplating, or at least teasing the notion of a Fast and Furious and Jurassic World crossover, we cannot rule anything out anymore, including good taste, because I don't want to see Dom race a raptor unless he gets eaten, and then the raptor starts piloting the charger. That sounds a lot more interesting to me, because no thank you. I don't need I'm to horrified. S- Hold on. I am horrified by two things in that when what you just said. One, that there that anyone would consider a Jurassic Park Fast and Furious series crossover. Two, piloting a charger. Yeah, I want to see a raptor driving a no. car. No, 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 no. You said piloting. <laughs> yeah, piloting can be interchangeable for driving. Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apparently I'm allergic to that idea. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. Uh, you don't got yeah. sneezes. You got family. Oh, stop. I just, honestly, I'm surprised that we've gotten to this point at five, Fast 9, which that comes out this weekend, doesn't it? Yep, and we were not going to have a discussion related to that somehow because I've not seen a single one besides Hobbs and Shaw. I Okay, well the first one's fine. I enjoy it. Were there And Tokyo Tokyo, guys, Tokyo Drift is cool. Guys, and let's all acknowledge that Fast cool. and Furious is turning twenty. Like the first movie they are selling they're stealing D V D players. Like Jeez. I was eight when the first one came out. And now I was make- nine when the first one came out. Oh no! And Josh just <laughs> immediately became that old man in in Last Crusade that chose the wrong cup and immediately just aged rapidly. <laughs> yes. I, Josh and I still very much have our doubts about this GI Joe movie just because yeah. we've been burned, not just burned, but burned hard. Because I'm sorry, those two GI Joe movies were so egregiously bad. I hated them. So except. For the cliffside fight, Josh. I know you're going to bring it okay, up in the but second like also, one. Also, like the one thing that I love, I did love that about them, and I never, and that to me opened my eyes a little bit. Was I really liked Channing Tatum in as Duke? Yeah, and then they decided like, to kill him off, and they killed him off, which is really sad. But it opened my eyes. I was like, bro, maybe Channing Tatum isn't just like eye candy guy. And then he did Jupiter Ascending, and so now. Uh, 